Hello and welcome to this special edition of Tech24 dedicated to the digital revolution museums are undergoing. We'll cross over to Brooklyn to speak to Jake Barton, the digital architect of New York City's 9-11 Memorial. We'll ask him how technology can help engage visitors in different ways and how it can boost our overall experience of museums. And during Test24, Dan and I will be in two different places at the same time. We'll travel instantly to the city of Autun in Burgundy to visit their Museum of Natural History. It's made possible thanks to a telepresence robots called Beam. But first, museums are in danger with attendance dipping everywhere around the globe. But the digital revolution is now disrupting the entire industry. Curators have even entered a race to find all the ways in which technology can help them engage visitors in art, but also science and history. The main challenge seems to be to attract millennials in particular. These futuristic looking glasses are being called the audio guide of the future. Fitted with a small screen in front of the eye and an earpiece, it allows you to see photos and videos and hear explanations. I'm looking at the painting, but also other works, comparisons, little details, the inspiration. It's all on the screen. And it's accompanied by an audio explanation. This example shows what you'd see looking at this painting by Icelandic artist Aero using the special glasses. Close-ups of details in the work are highlighted and explained. The Grand Palais in Paris is the first French museum to experiment with these glasses. They cost 8 euros to rent, 3 euros more than a standard audio guide. The Museum of Man in Paris is reaching out to its youngest visitors with a guided tour that's designed like a treasure hunt. New displays are interactive with touch screens and motion sensors. Games are part of the experience. One of the most popular morphs visitors' faces into those of Neanderthals. Historic monuments are also getting in on the act, in certain cases by helping visitors to travel back in time. Thanks to augmented reality, visitors to the conciergerie can see what the Hall of Soldiers would have looked like in the Middle Ages. In 1378, a sumptuous feast was held at the ancient royal castle. It's been recreated in minute detail, including the original tapestries now housed in New York. It's neither in this state nor at the conciergerie, so we've brought back to the conciergerie some things that can no longer be seen and restored them virtually. For museums, embracing the digital revolution is one way they hope to keep attendance rates from slipping. Let's now welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. We just saw in the report, museums are now developing uh, new experiences, digital experiences. They're using uh, VR, but also augmented reality. But today you're going to tell us about a very new experience. Absolutely. It's uh, an experience created by a Paris-based company called Real Time Art. Now, what they have done is instead of having these personal experiences using virtual reality, like you have, you can have these experiences using cardboard or different virtual reality headsets, uh, this particular company wants uh, experiencing different artifacts or sculptures in a museum, uh, a communal experience. So it can be shared by many people through this uh, screen, as you see. Uh, this screen feels weightless because its weight is uh, held by this robot which is highly flexible, it's a seven axis robot, and all you have to do is just touch the screen and it moves like a feather, you don't feel the weight at all. Now, as you move the screen, you can adjust the, the zoom, for example, the zoom levels, right. so the closer you get, the sculpture gets, you know, there's a zoom in into that particular piece of art, 
and so on. So, and you can turn the screen and have a 360 degree view of the sculpture as well. So it's a different experience and this has been done by using a 3D engine and algorithm and this particular robot can be used for multiple applications and it can be also, you know, it can also be, there could be an algorithm which can be used on it for machine learning. It's a very impressive experience. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, for more on this, I'm now joined by Jake Barton, the principal and founder of Local Projects, an interactive design studio that creates groundbreaking experiences. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. Among other museums, you and your team have designed the 9-11 Memorial Museum in New York City that opened to the public in 2014. You were tasked with bringing this complex and controversial chapter in contemporary history to life. What were the main challenges and, and what kind of experience did you create? The main challenge was how to create a museum that would work both for people who literally ran out of the burning buildings, live through the history of that day, but also work for 10 and 15 and 20 year olds who remember nothing about that day. It's very hard to establish a narrative for both of them so the technology we developed allows one group to tell their own history and stories for the other group. It's rethinking the museum as a platform where people put in their own stories and thoughts and feelings, and that those are then shared and create the museum experience for other visitors. And now in a TED talk you gave some years ago that was viewed more than 800,000 times, you explained that it's not too much about the technology itself, but rather what you ask people to do with it. Could you give us more details? So I think the key to how technology works is to imagine the emotional impact that you want to create between storytelling and architecture. Technology itself is just a tool, and it quickly changes and transforms and evolves. However, making an emotional impact, whether it's through an amazing image, painting, poem, piece of writing, or interactive screen or interface, that is what will age well. So from our standpoint, we always look to create that human connection because that's inevitably what really makes impact on every visitor. And now tell us more about some of your favorite digital tools you've created for museums. I think for us, one of the things that we're proudest of is the pen which we created for the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum here in New York City. It's essentially our national design museum and it allows every visitor to play designer while they're moving through the museum. It's essentially a, a digital pen that both saves objects from the collection. So anytime you see anything that you're inspired by, whether it's a base or a, a piece of tapestry or an individual piece of architecture, you can save it onto your pen. And then you can use what you saved to inspire your own aspect as a designer. You can create architecture, you can create uh, different pieces of furniture or fashion. You can literally draw on the walls to create your own custom wallpaper and environment. And that ability for people to customize, to share their own thoughts, to explore their own creativity within a museum suddenly makes the museum much more relevant because all of the collections become an inspiration for you and your personal vision. Thank you so much, sir. Definitely. Thank you so much for your questions. I appreciate it. That was Jake Barton, the principal and founder of the Design Lab Local Projects. Moving on now to Test24. What if robotics were to work in favor of culture? They're often presented as unlikely bedfellows, but today we're going to prove that stereotype wrong with the telepresence robot Beam. Dan, you're taking us in a museum in Burgundy. Absolutely. This is great fun. I'm, we are standing here in Paris now. We are being transported to a museum near Lyon, which is hundreds of kilometers away. So let's take a small tour. Hello, Ben. Hello, how Hello, are you? Ben. Welcome to your turn. Thank you very much. So as you can see here, I am now moving along. The robot is moving, or rather, using uh, controls on my laptop. You can do the same using your phone or iPad. And this is a museum of uh, natural history. So there are. This is a, one of, or rather, the biggest museum of 
fossils, natural fossils. They have a collection of 120,000 fossils, so it's an impressive collection. It's the biggest in the world, actually. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Can you tell us more about, uh, give us a brief introduction about this museum? Yes, you are now in a room that where you can see the history of Oton and with the dinosaurs that left their traces in their footprints in the, in, on the ground. You can see it here. Okay, I'll just go closer to it and I'll take a, yes, maybe okay. zoom on to it. So you can see here, I'm literally moving in the museum. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, I'm just So using... you could be in the US right now and you could be visiting this Anywhere this in museum. the world. So I can go here if I want to inspect it closely, I can zoom in. So see you, I can see, wow. the, see this particular piece in detail. Zoom out, turn around. This I'm doing it only with the use of these four keys, up, down, left and right. right. That's how I'm moving. So, what happens here is that uh, through their dedicated application, I'm able to connect uh, to that robot, which is a 1.6 meter tall robot. It has a screen that has two cameras, one microphone, so they can see and hear us, and we can, of course, we are seeing and hearing them as well. It has a motorized wheelbase, so that's what makes it move. It is very agile, so it moves very easily. And uh, this uh, particular museum has been visited by uh, students in Phnom Penh, for example, uh, children in hospitals have also had these remote visits to this museum. And this is just one of the examples of how uh, the use of robot in museum tech is going to change the way, you know, we experience these things. Right. We don't even need to travel anymore. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dan. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24 dedicated to museums. We hope you enjoyed it and do stay with us here on France 24.